guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are finally going to be making the largest piece that I've ever done on this channel. Today I'm going to be making a giant griffin. Now this piece is so massive that I'm going to have to divide it between a few different videos just to show you how I did it. So it's going to probably take about three to five videos and this is the first one of it. So today's video we are going to go over how I made the wings and the tail for the creature. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start on the tail because it's the easiest and we can get it out of the way real quick and then we can focus on the wings. So the tail is super simple. The only thing is I didn't have a long strip of fabric to use for the body of the tail. So I had to make a bunch of really short ones and I need to sew these together now. So I'm going to do that real quick and then we're going to work on the end of the tail. So this was a little bit more work than it should be, but honestly you probably won't have this much trouble unless you're using scrap fabric. Now for the end of the tail, I have it broken up in a few different layers because I want it to fade from the red of the main body of the tail to a brown to a black. I also have these feather pieces that I cut out of felt and I'm going to sew these between the layers. So the way I have it laid out right now is the brown piece gets connected to the black piece but we're going to be sewing that larger piece of felt in between those pieces. That way we have some feathers sticking out of the end of the tail. And then I also have little pieces of felt that are going to go at the very top of the tip of the tail when we connect it to the rest of the tail. So this is what the tip of the tail looks like right now. I have it into two pieces right now. I have the brown and black connected and you can see the felt pieces sticking out. And now I need to sew down one side. So I'm going to sandwich these two pieces together and I'm going to sew them together. I'm waiting on sewing the other side because we still need to connect the main body of the tail to the tip of the tail. After we get those two pieces together, we're going to lay this out, we're going to lay some felt pieces in place, and we're going to connect this to the body of the tail. Okay, our tail is one final piece now, and we just need to close this up and stuff it. Now I'm going to make it a lot easier and I'm going to actually stuff the tail as I'm sewing it because when you have this long strip of fabric it's going to be really hard to smush that stuffing all the way to the bottom of it. So we're just going to be sewing like maybe six inches, stuff that, six inches, and stuff that again until we get to the very end. And there we have it. We have a griffin slash lion tail. Honestly this would work if you want to make a large lion. You just minus the little feather pieces. Okay, now we're going to start on the wings. Now this project is quite large and I needed the extra space for it. My little desk was not working. I could not get a good shot and show you guys how to put everything together. So welcome to my floor. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make a pattern to make our wings out of. Now I'm going to make my pattern the kind of cheap and expensive way because I'm going to end up throwing this away after I make the wings. So I don't really need to spend a lot of money on what I'm drawing the pattern on. If you want, you can actually get a large sheet of paper and you could probably keep the pattern and use it over and over again but I'm just gonna find it easier for myself to just draw it again if I want to so I'm gonna take a bunch of copy paper and I'm gonna start taping it together to make one large sheet of paper so I'm making my griffin wings so large that the pattern actually won't fit on the tabletop that I'm using. Yes, I'm using a fold-up tabletop for this, I just have the legs not extended so it's just resting on the floor. I needed a hard surface for this so I could draw this out. So after getting all of my paper put together, I used part of the wing pattern to kind of get an idea of how long the tips of the feathers should be. I kind of marked this out and then I started drawing out where I wanted the feathers to go. This is going to be the largest layer. This is the one that extends the furthest from the wing. I'm making sure to draw the feathers on the tip of the wing kind of pointed and as you get closer and closer to the body, I'm rounding them off. Now I'm going to be using the same pattern to make multiple layers for my wings, so I'm going to be drawing a pattern basically on top of another pattern. So I'm going to use different markers to help distinguish which pattern is which. So once I have the first drawing done, I'm going to go over it and make another layer of feathers. And then I'm going to make an even smaller layer after that. Once I have the feathers drawn, I made sure to trace the fabric part that's going to go at the very top of the wing, and now I just need to cut everything out. Now again, my wings are really large, so I kind of have to adjust for this, and I had to cut my pattern in half, that way I could fit it on the fabric. Now the fabric that I'm using is doubled up, that way I only need to draw my pattern out twice, once for each wing. So I decided that I want the tips of my wings to be white, so I'm going to start with that, and then the other half of the pattern is going to be black. 
So I'm just gonna lay my pattern out and I'm gonna trace over this using my markers. I'm just lightly going over it, that way the marker does not bleed through the fabric. Once I have them traced out, I'm not going to completely cut the patterns out, I'm just going to separate the two pieces, that way we can sew it and I don't have to go around all these edges yet. I'm going to cut off the extra fabric after we sew it. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. The only thing different with using the black fabric, I had to get a white pencil to draw the pattern out instead of using a marker because it just wasn't showing up. Okay, so we are done with this pattern the way it is now, so we need to adjust it so we can make the second layer. So I taped the two pieces back together because we had to cut them apart, and now I'm going to cut off all the feathers that are for the first layer that we did. And then once you have all those feathers cut off, you have your second pattern. Now again, I still had to cut this in half because it still was just a little too large for the fabric that I had. Now I'm still sticking with the lighter colors, but the part closer to the inside part of the wings is actually more of a cream color instead of a white. And then I'm going to do the other layer of tip feathers, the same white that we did the first layer. So again, I'm going to trace my pattern, making sure to flip it over so we get an opposite pattern for the other side. This isn't necessary because, again, you can just flip these over once you're done with it, but I did it to keep track of where I was. Okay, so the second layer is done, and now we need to move on to the third and final layer. So we're going to retape this together again, and we're going to cut off those extra feathers. Just like we did with the other layer. Now this layer is a little bit different than the other layers. The other layers we are going to sew together and stuff, so there's a little bit more bulkiness to them. But these layers are going to be made out of felt. And I'm going to have this actually on both sides of the wings. So I'm still going to cut out four of these pieces, but they're not going to be sewn together, they're done as they are. Okay, so now that all of our fabric is cut out, we can move back to my desk and we can start sewing the layers together. So I'm going to start with the black layer that's going to be at the very bottom of the wing, and I'm just going to sew around all those lines that I drew onto the fabric. Once we've sewn around all those feathers, we're going to take our scissors and cut off all that extra fabric. Make sure you get as much of it off as you can because when you flip this right side out, the way the feathers are, they're going to kind of bunch in between. Okay, so I'm going to flip this right side out and we have a little bit more sewing to do. We're actually going to be sewing in between the two feathers to make it look like they're divided a little bit more, but they're not actually divided. So I'm going to use my white pencil again and we're going to draw out where we want our lines to go. Then I'm going to use my sewing machine to follow all of these lines. Make sure to go in between each feather. Now before you start on the sewing for this, make sure that you double check that your feathers are flipped right side out already. If they're inside out while you do this sewing, you won't be able to flip them right side out afterwards. And you'll have to pick out all those seams that you did. And basically start over. And then once you've sewn between all those feathers, we can now move on to stuffing the feathers. Now you don't want to stuff all the way up, you want to just do the ends of it and make sure they're nice and plump, but you don't want to go all the way up because we're going to have another layer on top of this and it's going to make it too bulky if you do all the stuffing. So again, just stuff the very ends of all the feathers. Okay, so the black bottom part of the wing is all finished, and now we're going to move on to the white tips of the wings. So we're basically doing the same thing, the wings are just shaped a little bit differently this time, so just follow those lines that you drew out on the fabric. After you've sewn through all those lines, you're going to cut off all your extra fabric, you're going to sew in between all the feathers. Now the main difference between doing this part of the wing and then the black part of the wing is we're not going to draw out those lines between the feathers before we sew it. We're going to have to freehand it because if we used a marker on the white fabric, it's going to stain it and we won't be able to get it off. The white pencil on the black fabric, on the other hand, will just rub off eventually. So again, I'm going to freehand this and then I'm going to stuff the ends of all these feathers just like we did before, except because these are a little longer, you might have to put a little bit more stuffing in them. Okay, so now we have the two different parts for the first layer of the wings, and we're going to sew these two pieces together. So I'm going to hand sew this just because it's a little easier. Since everything's stuffed right now, it's going to be kind of awkward to get in my sewing machine. And then once I'm done sewing that together, we're going to start on the second layer. So just like the previous layer, we're going to do everything exactly the same, except everything is just a little bit smaller. 
And then again, just like the previous layer, we're going to sew the two pieces for the second layer together by hand. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys how the layers look together. So back to the floor. So anyways, this is what the two main layers look like together, and we need to actually sew these together. Now, I made a mistake and tried to do this with my sewing machine. Now, if you have a stronger sewing machine, you probably won't have trouble with this, but my sewing machine is not very nice, and I ended up breaking my needle doing this. So, I recommend if you're going to sew these two layers together, do it by hand, unless you have a very strong sewing machine. Anyways, I learned from my mistake and I'm going to hand sew the felt layer on both sides of the wings by hand. So again, I'm doing this on both sides of the wings. So I'm just going to lay that felt piece out and then I'm just going to sew along it. I decided that it was getting a little bulky, so I'm going to cut off the extra felt after I've gotten the sewing done for it. Okay, so we're pretty much on the very last step of making the wings and that's adding the fur fabric to the very top of the wing. So the top part of the wing is going to be a brown fur fabric and then the under wing is going to be a black fur fabric. So I'm going to sew this again by hand because again I made everything really thick and it's just going to be a lot easier if I just sew by hand. And then once I have the fur fabric sewn onto the wing, I just need to close up the very top. So I'm just going to hand sew that as well. And then once you have the very top of your wing closed off, you're pretty much done with it. And you just got to make your other wing. I made mine at the same time, but if you decided to do one at a time, well, you got to do the project again to make a pair. Okay guys, and that's how I made the wings and the tail of the griffin. I had so much fun and I can't wait to start on the body of the griffin. That is going to be next Friday. This is going to be a Friday series and our normal upload date is going to be Thursday. So until this is done, we're going to have two videos a week and I'm really excited for that and I hope you guys are too. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! <laughs>